anything less. Let's touch gloves, go back to the corner, let's get ready to rock and roll. Scintillating stare down prior to the opening bell of this, the main event of Strike Force Miami for the vacant Strike Force welterweight title. Nick Diaz, four of his last five wins via form of knockout. While Marius Sorumska is looking to become the first fighter ever to hold major titles in Japan and North America at the same time. Judge, are you ready? Judge, are you ready? Judge, are you ready? Fighter, are you ready? Fighter, are you ready? Five five-minute rounds to determine history at Strike Force, and without warning, Zorovskis quickly goes to the kicks, tags Diaz with a quick combination, and Diaz now with that reach finds Zorovskis as well. Overhand left by Diaz, already hurting. Oh, 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 oh. Nick Diaz finding the range on that left hand already. Man, a slug fest early on here. We did not anticipate anything less than Zorovskis kicks Diaz, who doubles over looking for the single leg early. He took a big knee right before that single leg. I think convinced him to jump on that takedown. In many ways, Zorovsk is very similar in his style to Kung Lee, the former Strike Force middleweight champion. Frank, you were in the cage with Nick Diaz not too long ago. What impressed you the most about the Stockton bad boy? Uh, he just has weird angles of punching, and he's consistently repetitive in combinations with his hands. They don't hurt, but they scramble your brain and they confuse you. So if they don't hurt, how do they scramble your brain? I don't know. They don't hurt. They just keep confusing me. I think because he keeps throwing punches and bunches. Now, Nick Diaz, usually has, he spent his whole career fighting guys in orthodox stance, but Zolomskis is a southpaw. Didn't have any problem coming in with that left hand. Both of them southpaws in this fight. And Diaz now working away on the legs of Zorovskis, doing the homework, wanting to make sure, hey, if you're going to deliver that kick, it's going to be a lot heavier and it's going to hurt a lot more than you're accustomed to. Zorovskis seems frozen in this position yep. and he's getting whacked by that knee and that's going to hurt his chances to move around and deliver those kicks. That nope. leg is going to blow up terribly and his biggest skill set, which is movement and versatility is going to be gone. I know one thing, every time Nick Diaz is on the card, the CompuStrike strike employees cringe just because of the sheer volume of strikes this guy delivers. Well, this simple strategy of beating up that leg, I think it's going to pay huge dividends if we get out of this first round. Well, he's pinned Zorovskis against the fence. And Zorovskis definitely has to circle away, alleviate the pressure being put on him now by Diaz, taking him, looking to run the pipe. Uh-oh, uh -oh. this is not good. Oh, Zorovskis backs away, however. Left hand connects by Diaz, using that reach again. Zorovskis has to close the gap, and quick. That short strike hurt him, stumbled Zorovskis a little bit. Now again, Diaz unloading the lefts. And he's landing him. And Diaz always throws caution to the win. I think he's figured it out. He recovered awful free, quick, free. though. The referee. The I'm not going to tell you his head. Go. There's a warning here. Zorovskis, in some ways, threw caution to the wind and just gutted out the knockdown. And there's blood now dripping from the face of Nick Diaz. And Zorovskis now smells the blood, beginning to time himself. But Diaz still beating him in the punch because of the reach advantage. This is an absolute war. We did not anticipate anything less than Zorovskis. There was Diaz timing it, catching the kick. Timing and catching that single leg. This is a dangerous game for him. Well, the partisan crowd here in the United States in Miami cheering Nick Diaz. And in his illustrious career, Diaz has only lost via form of knockout twice. They go to the fence. They go to the fence. While Zorovskis has never been submitted. So an interesting tale there as the right hand tattoos the face of Zorovskis who eats it and delivers one of his own. But now he's got to find a way. He's getting tattooed here. He's stuck at the end of Diaz's punches. I have been there. Just lay 
Lions are gone. They're absolutely wild. He is a Caesar Gracie Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt. You do not get a Caesar Gracie Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu black belt just for trying. You have to work your ass off, Steven. And yet this guy, I mean, you have to start considering this guy one of the top ten pound-for-pound fighters in the world with striking like that coupled with his Jiu-Jitsu skills. Yes, Marl, because he beat a champion. He didn't beat just a contender. He beat a champion who is known as a striker and who came out there and hurt Nick Diaz. And Nick Diaz, if this was a complete firefight, Frank, he beat him at his own game. That is Nick Diaz. Well, Jerome's just got his attention late in the round with a nice exchange, and he did it by moving forward in that knee. And a quick hook. Look, Diaz shied away and started looking for a place to fall. I thought he might get finished here. Jerome just jumped on him, made a mistake here, I think, though, in staying on the ground and letting Nick Diaz recover. These little short shots, they're letting Nick recover. And you got to stay on top of Nick if you're going to hurt him. He's in too good a shape to let off the hook. Without a doubt, Diaz belongs at 170 pounds. This guy's physical attributes are amazing. Amazing. And when he comes in with punches, like, look at the finishing.